Welcome to the Flag Bearer Channel. This is Little Known Black History Facts. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Jeremiah G. Hamilton, the Prince of Darkness. Was he a villain, a hustler, or a financial genius? Jeremiah G. Hamilton was Wall Street's first black millionaire and the only African-American broker to join mid-19th century New York's Millionaires Club. He escaped Haiti in 1828 and began building his fortune by selling to both white and black entrepreneurs. He was known as the Prince of Darkness by most and Nigger Hamilton by others and was considered the wealthiest African American of the 19th century. Hamilton used questionable tactics to amass his considerable wealth and was reportedly despised by both black and white businessmen. In the midst of a segregated New York, Hamilton worked freely out of an office on Wall Street and participated in the city's real estate boom. He invested in land and property around the Hudson River and owned stock in railways that denied access to members of his own race. One of Hamilton's contemporaries observed that he brazenly assumed the privileges of a white man, but he and others were unable to check Hamilton's ambitions. Hamilton ignored, denounced, or outsmarted racial attacks even thwarting a lynch mob during the draft riots of July 1863. Hamilton's 40-year Wall Street legacy is either frowned upon because of his alleged dishonest business practices or admired for his creative business acumen in a time where a black man prospering on Wall Street seemed impossible. African-American contemporaries were scandalized by Hamilton's relentless financial scheming and in turn, the broker made a point of ignoring New York's black community entirely. The details of his life are somewhat obscure, but he may have been born somewhere in the West Indies or the city of Richmond, Virginia in May 1807. He appears first in historical records as a young man in his early 20s who was involved in a shady scheme in Haiti that included a counterfeit coinage that went wrong. The scheme involved the transportation of a freight of fake coins from Canada to Haiti in order to sell them to New York businessmen. Under the threat of capture and execution, he and his white compatriots fled to the United States. When Haitian authorities caught wind of Hamilton's counterfeit ring, they issued a $300 reward for his apprehension. Hamilton managed to escape on a ship back to New York. Word of the scandal soon got back to New York, where the press slammed Hamilton and deemed him the Prince of Darkness. However, the soon-to-be black broker had gotten a taste of fast money and had made no plans to stop his climb to the top of the business world. By 1833, Hamilton reinvented himself as an astute businessman in New York City. Casting his eyes on Wall Street, he soon became a successful but ruthless trader. His ascent to greater financial heights would be catapulted during the Great New York Fire of 1835, where up to 700 businesses in Manhattan were burned to the ground. Hamilton took advantage of the fire and profited what would be worth $5 million in today's currency by denying transactions of investors who could no longer present the necessary paperwork that had been burned in the fire. He later invested the money in real estate, buying 47 properties in present-day Astoria, including a local mansion and a 400-foot-long dock. Set on further increasing his net worth, it is rumored that Hamilton had a knack for insuring ships and then purposely sinking them in order to collect the insurance money. His methods would lead to New York Marine Insurance Companies refusing to insure any ships operated by Hamilton. In fact, in 1843, the Atlantic Insurance Company sued Hamilton, claiming that he had illegally obtained $50,000 in insurance payouts. Hamilton beat the lawsuit after he claimed the insurance company had hired a hitman to drown him in the East River. Not only was Hamilton known for dodging lawsuits, he also used the legal action to amass more wealth. The lawsuit became Hamilton's weapon of choice. For instance, in the 1840s, Hamilton started a legal war with Poughkeepsie Silk Company in hopes that the company would collapse, leaving its revenue to shareholders like himself. 
Continuing to use the courtroom as an avenue to income, Hamilton challenged business tycoon Cornelius Vanderbilt in the 1850s for control over the Accessory Transit Company. Vanderbilt's biographer recalls the tycoon saying that he did not fear Hamilton because he never feared anybody, but he mostly respected him. Vanderbilt wasn't the only prominent businessman that respected Hamilton. In fact, most of Wall Street awed Hamilton's business savvy techniques, especially his stock market knowledge. Hamilton could be credited with the invention of one of America's first hedge funds with the development of his investor pool in the 1860s, where he would convince his nine black counterparts to give him money to pick and invest in stocks. His pool became so popular that he began to request expensive champagnes and high quality cigars from investors to better their chances of being accepted into his pool. Jeremiah Hamilton embodied a by any means necessary attitude long before Malcolm X preached the model to the masses during the civil rights era. He bought and traded stocks, owned properties, and engaged in legal battles with those who once would be considered his owner and made millions in the process. The highlights of his life were way before its time. He purchased a rural New Jersey mansion, married and had eight children with a white woman, Eliza, his wife, and owned stock in railways that Jim Crowed black people. During the bloody week of the draft riots of 1863, the family's upscale home on New York City's East 29th Street was invaded by an Irish mob, which intended to lynch him. It is said that Hamilton barely escaped through a back door and vaulted over a fence. Unlike many black millionaires who succeeded him, Hamilton avoided contact with other African Americans and maintained his business dealings exclusively with whites. Despite death threats and attempts to kill him, he went on to live a long, prosperous life. Hamilton died in 1875 at the age of 68 from pneumonia. He was the richest black man in the United States with a $2 million estate that would be equivalent to over $55 million today. Some described him as a notorious colored capitalist, while others wrote his judgment in banking was highly esteemed and he was often consulted by prominent bankers. Despite his success and fame in many New York financial circles, news of his death received little attention. During his career as a stockbroker on Wall Street, Hamilton was the only black millionaire in New York. During his lifetime, black intellectuals disparaged his relentless pursuit of wealth as crass and undignified. American historians would shun Jeremiah Hamilton, ignoring his prominence in Wall Street during the 1840s and 50s. Today, he is all but forgotten. Hamilton was laid to rest next to his two daughters in their family plot at Brooklyn's Greenwood Cemetery. Until next time, if you like little known history facts as I do, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Press the bell to be notified of future uploads. Thank you for watching.